sanki. Unmute. Okay, I'll mute everybody. Um, text. Yeah. Yes, okay. <clears throat> okay, let's begin with the brain. Spirit all Buddha and Buddhas to us to bless us with a bright understanding of Ham. So we can have our experience and for that we can transform ourselves and benefit ourselves and benefit others in the It's intentions and listening to us. So I'll be thousand books to bless me to have a right understanding of the life. Now the uh, after the both sitas and then Stonglin general exchange teaching that master told me advice. Yeah, after after now the following teaching is about the forgiveness, tolerance, and forgiveness to tolerance. Forgiveness, tolerance, the patience also happens because of understanding the person who is harming me, who is giving me difficulty times, hard times. Yeah, he is himself or herself is himself. He or herself also in the control by negative emotions because the reasons or oh, he is harming me, he's doing misbehaving me, he just saying bad about me. Yeah, because because of this type of understanding, make us remain calm and easily forgive. Another way of uh, having a patient and forgiveness is whatever happened in our life is because of the result of our karma. So now I'm facing these difficulties. I'm facing criticism from people. Okay, harming from people. There's people who start to harm me, saying bad things about me, insulting me, or stealing uh, my wealth that I possess. All things happening in my life, there should be some cause. Without any causes, cannot happen anything. That's the one the view of Buddhism. Everything has a reason behind it. So it means now I'm facing criticizing from people, or people come to my home stealing my wealth or doing harming me, yeah, insulting me. It's all things that we don't want. If happen this, or oh, we have to accept, or oh, it's a result of my karma. And with this understanding, it also help us to remain calm. Also, it also help us remain calm and easy to forgive that person who is harming us. Yeah. Forgiveness is not only about the enemies that we should forgive those enemy people who harm us. Yeah. It also we need in our family members because in family also we are not always nice to each other. Sometimes we are hurry and sometimes we are so stressed and we speak harsh to each other. And we have if we are lacking of patience, then the fight happens. And then the small small words of harsh word of small words bring fight. And because of fight, lack of uh, patient, lack of forgiveness, then the relationship became a far, far away. And then whole relationship ruins. I've seen many people who have no good relationship with their own families. They don't talk with their brothers and sisters. They don't talk with their parents. They have no good relationship with their own brothers. Because small things, they have something happen and they, because they become angry and they couldn't forgive. And then because they keep this anger inside you, yeah, inside them, and then they keep, 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 and then the relationship becomes far, far. Okay, for you, you insult me, you speak harsh to me, I don't want to speak to you anymore. And then they don't speak whole life, like years ago, they don't speak. It started from where? But small things. All happens how? Because we lack of patience, yeah, because of control by anger or hatred, that right? we have this anger and hatred. So now these teachings about all about forgiveness and having patience, having a tolerance, no matter what happens in our life, no matter what kind of difficulty comes in my way, or oh, I will not lose my temper. I will remain calm. Happiness comes or suffering comes. Praise comes or insult comes. 
Okay? Gain comes or loss comes. No matter what comes in my way, I remain calm. I will not let anger or hatred control me. This is the one of the what you call a message that Master is trying to give us. Okay? Even if others in the grace of great desire, yeah, the 12 of the chapter 12 of, yeah, if, if, even if others in the grace of great desire should steal or encourage others to take away all the wealth that I possess, to dedicate to them entirely my body, possession, and all my mirrors in the past, present, and future, this is the path of good stories. Yeah, again, okay, this is the react, how you react if people come, come to you and try to steal the wealth that you possess. What kind of attitude you will have? I must say, oh, in that case, also do not let anger control you. Do not bring, do not, do not let this hatred control you. In that moment, also remain calm. Right. So, what the remain calm means? If this process that person taking is, if doesn't matter that for us, then of course let him take away, and you know, just remain calm and try to teach or should not steal, right? You know, steal and you know, try to help this person who's trying to steal, right? But sometimes those processes that we need in our life, like a process, this wealth doesn't have to be like some kind of amount of money. It can be a, our job, it can be our husband, wife, it can be our car, it can be our house, it can be our bank balance. And people come to steal us, then what to do? Then, oh, I'm good store, I'm practicing good store, so please take it. I don't mind, yeah. We cannot say this way. We are not in that state. That we are ready to give up everything. We are not reaching that state, high state, good loss. Yeah, these things we need to survive. Now, what to do if people come to steal in your homes? Then call the police, right? Protect the wealth. Understand? But one thing: make sure that this person come to you. Yeah, you shouldn't have anger or hate toward him. You look at him. Oh, he's a controlled by ignorance. He doesn't know how to survive life doing other work except stealings. All he knows is steal things. That's ignorance. Or oh, understand him, he's ignorance. Yeah, he has a loss of desire and he doesn't know right way, right method to survive. All he knows <clears throat> is this bad way, wrong way, stealing. Yeah, so with understanding this, I forgive that person. Do not bring anger toward him or hate toward him. Yeah, and same time, because of this compassion, you look at him and forgive that person. Because of the wisdom, you protect yourself. Or these people start to steal new home or your wealth, now protect. You should call police, lock the door, or do something to protect. That's the important part. Okay, so here at Mass, yeah, if if come other to in, in your in your home or the wealth you possess, if somebody or somebody sends someone to steal your wealth what kind of behavior you should do. Even in that case, if possible, or oh, let, let, let him take away these things, which is not matter. Let's say small amount of food, or your old shoes, or like a small, small clothes yeah, and old dress, then, okay, let's take him, but teach him, or oh, don't do it again. And now I will let you take it. Don't you do it again. It's not right, please. There are many things you can do. You should do a job. How long you want to do steal and by stealing and you can survive, yeah. There's so many different opportunities out there. You should search work yeah? with this teaching, let him and never do it again. Yeah, warn him with compassion, right? And as I said, the wealth that we need in our life, then of course we have to protect. Because we need also those things, yeah, with wisdom, using the wisdom. And then sometime, oh, this person come to steal me, and then you know, even who stole already, right? And you don't find out. Yeah. Now what to do? The master says, oh, even who take your wealth, dedicate your virtues that you'll be gathering in the future, in the past, in the past, present in the future. Not only the wealth or money that who, who, who took that belong to me, may my virtues also reach him and bring him peace and joy and happiness in his life, who take my wealth, who steal my wealth. See, this kind of attitude you should apply. So what did this means again? It means do not let anger or hatred control you. That's the most important things. Once hatred or anger control you, then what happened? It there's no guarantee that this hatred or anger harm that person. 
but this guarantee that it will harm you. No one person, no people feel happy or peace who are controlled by anger or hatred. Right? So therefore, for these people who do to steal to your wealth, yeah, remain calm, right? And have a forgiveness and use a wisdom to protect your wealth. Okay, this is the wax of goods to us. <clears throat> we have a story of a Zen master. The story says one of the Zen master living somewhere in Japan, in the mountains yeah, near the village. So one day the thief came at night. The master has only one blanket he had. He had no other, uh, other wealth or anything. He doesn't know, no other thing he possessed. All he possessed was a blanket. So he was meditating with blanket and suddenly this thief come and master saw and the thief also saw that they saw each other. And thief got scared that he thought maybe master was sleeping but master was meditating. So he said, oh, please welcome. You came to, you came to steal something in my home, in my this cave. Thank you. This whole town think that I'm a poor person. Or you think that I'm a wealthy person. Or what a respect you're giving to me. Whole town people think I'm a poor, I have nothing. You are the only one who thinks that I have something. What a great person you are. What a kind person you are. Please come. All I have this blanket. Please take this blanket. And next time you come, please inform me so I can prepare the good food for you. That's it. So he said, the thief just run away and he come back his home and this thief and start to think what kind of master he is. When you go to some normal people's homes, yeah, some, then they will yell and they start to fight him. Yeah, but this master was calm and he said his words and thank you for giving me respect that thinking about me that I'm a rich person. Yeah, oh, what a wonderful person he is. Then next morning he come to ask forgiveness to the master and he became Master disciple. Okay, on the Zen master shoes. See how you should respond. You come to me, see, as a wealthy person, oh, what a great honor you're giving to me. Whole town thinking I'm a poor guy, and you are the one who thinking I have something. Thank you for giving me honor. See, mind to do that. Okay, like this. <clears throat> we have also a story of Master Millar by big stealing. This thief is everywhere. Even in the cities, the village, town, even Himalayas, we have thieves. <laughs> you know, one of the story of Milarepaya. But Milarepaya has nothing in the in the in the, in the, in the cave. Yeah, Ali is like a small port, and he find the food is the in the, in the in the jungles and find some special vegetables. I don't know what you call it in English. Yeah, special vegetable. Okay, that's how he keep and that's how he has survived by eating that. And he has nothing. So one thief was looking at him. He thought, oh, this yogi has a must have a wealth insight, some kind of food or amount of food or you know, otherwise, how can he survive? So at the night time, he came to the cave, okay, and Lara was like a, laying down, and there was no light, yeah, darkness, and such, such. And so Lara said, even daytime, I searched for food, I couldn't find anything here. How can you find any food in the dark, in the night? He said to the thief, and then thief started to laugh. <laughs> Even when I'm hungry, yeah, I feel hungry, and I tried to search food in the, my cave. I couldn't find anything in here. And you come the dark and dark night, you try to search for food or something. How can you find it here? And they start to laugh and run away. The story says, yeah. So here also like that. The stealing things also happen in our life. People start to steal our job, steal our uh, what do you call our positions, yeah. Still our, let's say, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, yeah. Yeah, this happens in our life. So whenever this happens in life, or oh, remain calm. Yeah. Also, so many ancient master advice, they give, uh, what do you call it, uh, explain that when somebody steal our, our our wealth, okay, and we feel suffering, we, not, we, we, we don't feel good. We don't feel good, we feel anger, we don't feel good, why? What the real cause? Is it because of that person who steal? Or is it because we have attachment to our wealth that got stolen? Okay, now check very, very carefully. If we have no attachment to our, that that wealth which is already stolen, then even it is stolen, we don't feel anything. 
And we didn't feel, okay, take it away. I didn't mind. But because of attachment toward that wealth which is stolen by people, then we feel angry. We feel sad. We feel not good. So we must, oh, it's our own attachment bringing this sadness, bringing this not feeling, not good feeling in ourselves. Not that person who steal it. That's why so many sutras of Lord Buddha say, he said, attachment is the cause of suffering. The person who is not, the suffering of your mind is because of the stealing, is not a person who steals. It is your own attachment toward that wealth bringing you know, some kind of suffering in you. As I said before, example, like uh, you have, a, if you put your shoes, you know, many, many shoes is there, and you put your shoes also in the door, and suddenly one guy comes and he takes a step on your shoes. Yeah. And you feel bad. Maybe you feel angry. Okay? Why is that? Is that does person take a step on the shoes that bring you not feeling good? Or your attachment to all your shoes that bring you not feeling good? What the cause? Oh, my says, or oh, it's your attachment to all your shoes. These are my shoes. And my shoes be respected. You are not allowed to take a step on it. If this person, if the same person take a step on other shoes, you don't feel you don't any you don't feel anything. Like you feel remain calm, it doesn't bother you. But suddenly this person take a step on your shoes, then it bothers you. Why? Because your attachment. If you have no attachment to there, it cannot harm you. It cannot bother you at all. In our life, let's say we have attachment not only wealth, yeah, we have attachment to our dislike also. We all fear of death. What the real cause that makes us fear of death? Why? It's attachment. Okay, I don't want to live alone. I should be alive. Yeah, it's, I love my life. I live should alone, alive. So much attachment to this life. And then we heard that I'm going to die. Now, make us scared. Make us fear. Make us some kind of stress. Why this happens? Is not that death making us stress? Is our attachment making us uncomfortable, making us bad feeling, making bad feeling ups when we hurt? Yeah. So that's why so many sutras or oh, ancient master and buddhas or oh, root of suffering that we are facing today is the attachment. The attachment. Now you will understand the next also. Yeah. So therefore, as I said, if people come to steal in your home, or if you need these things, if already stolen, you cannot do anything, any anything anymore. Yeah, if already stolen, then or whoever stole my this, my shoes, my car, or my things, may he remain with happiness and a cause of happiness. And I dedicate my virtues also that I have created in past, present, and future. May became bring uh, may uh, bring a piece of happiness in him. That the person who stole it with this way dedicate, yeah. And if you find that wealth that already stolen, but do not get anger or hate toward that person who stole it, and look at that person who stole it, understand oh, this person is in sufferance, or this person is controlled by negative emotion, controlled by ignorance, he doesn't know other method to survive, all he knows is steal. What a poor person he is. I wish. He had some kind of wisdom in him, but he, he doesn't have it. It's understanding, being compassion for him. Yeah. And look at yourself. Oh, now this happened to me. Why? It must be as a reason behind it. It means I have done something similar in my past life. Somehow I have also still in my past. That's why I'm facing the result of my bad karma. So that's how it remain calm. Yeah, that's why. The main so this is how you should do it here. And real wealth, when you're talking about wealth, yeah, the real this real wealth is not about a gold, a bank balance, fame, name. They are, they are not the real wealth. The real wealth that brings the real peace inside, real satisfaction inside, brings real, bring real cost of happiness inside. That's the real wealth. And what the real wealth then? No? Real wealth. Is the great compassion, great love, great forgiveness. That's real wealth. And who understands this? Who 
who have really understanding of these things are. Yeah? Even he steals, even people come to steal him, he'll not begin anger. For him, his real wealth is compassion. Now he needs to protect his compassion. And what the enemy of compassion is the anger. So he not let anger come to near his compassion. Because so he wants to protect his wealth. And his wealth is the compassion that he has. Right? That's why. Mm -hmm. So this is the again one of the what you call the practice of compassions, okay, or forgiveness to other person. Yeah. Now another one is the thirteen part. Yeah. Even if others should seek to cut off my head, though I have done them not the slightest wrong, to take upon myself out of compassion all the harm they have missed is the practice of good students. Right. So many ancient masters also explain like, oh, you need to collect the real wealth. That being really happiness in you. Outside wealth is no guarantee it became a cause of happiness or a cause of suffering. Most of the case, the more we become richer, the more we lose our peace of mind. More we become popular, more this fame, names, this power comes, more we lose our peace of mind. Less we feel happiness, less we feel satisfactions. Right? So this wealth is just uh, you know, some side means. And it has no guarantee that it will bring some kind of happiness or peace. But the real wealth, when you have inner qualities, then there's no, there's no doubt it will definitely bring peace and happiness. Right? Wealth that we possess and we have attachment to it, it brings sufferings when, when we're going to lose it. So it means the wealth that we possess became our weakness now. There's so many ends in Indian math says, oh, you possess the wealth or wealth possess you is a question mark. Okay? If you have something, if you die or you know, the wealth not gonna be worried about you. Right? If you something happened to your wealth now, you're gonna be worried. Who possess who? Okay, we have one of the story of say like a one master and his student going on the way. And one Indian guy, yeah, in the India story, and see Indian stories. The one guy bringing the cow, yeah, cow, and the, and the neck they rob, pulling the cow by rob. Okay? So master, now look at master. Oh, look, who's the boss? He asked his young students. And young students, of course, master, a person is the boss. Who who possess who? Yeah, master. Says. Of course, master, the person possesses the cow. And then must ask another question. Okay, if let this cow make free, if make this cow free, then who go after who? Cow go after person or person go after cow? And then the students start to think, oh, that makes sense. Those cow not gonna go after man, yeah? Man will go after the cow. It means the wealth they possess. We think I possess this wealth. If it have attachment in it, and we, it became our weakness. It means now the wealth possesses us. Now that's a dangerous. So many, many people do suicide when they lost their job. You know that? So many people became like a crazy when they lost their job. Right? Why? Now this wealth became his weakness. Now this wealth possesses him or her. Once he lose it, now he became crazy. It's not about Wealth, yeah, as I said before, the wealth means name, fame, followers. I have seen some people who have a follower in, uh, no, I think, uh, Instagram or something, a few millions, and suddenly something happened, they lost all, I don't know, something, what do you call this, uh, all million followers disappear, something, and then this became crazy. <laughs> See, now this follower became his weakness now. He cannot survive. He died, and now he became like a, Uncomfortable, what do you call this? Uh, feeling not good about him. Now he distress, all kind of misery come in ways. Why? He, this possess, this wealth that he possess became his weakness. So it means, oh, we are the responsible now. Somebody steal my wealth and I don't feel good. I feel bad. I feel some kind of un what do you call stress. Who's the responsible for it? Is that person who steal my wealth? Or it is my own attachment? Is responsible for it. So when I check, oh, I found out oh, it's my own attachment. 
if I have no attachment at all, even this person still it, I don't feel anything bad. But because I have attachment to all these things, now people steal it and then I feel good. It means I am the responsible. My own attachment is leading me into the surface. Right? That's why so many Kadamba Master says, whenever a chick in my life, every time any fault happens in my life, is because of me. Yeah, one of the ancient Kadamba Master says, it's me. Every suffering, every problem happening in my life is because of me. I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know real cause. I don't know how to behave. That's why it all brings sufferings. When I check myself, I am the responsible for suffering. When I check others, or I find out that all happiness of my life, others are the real causes. They are the ones who are bringing the happiness in my life. All cause of happiness are others. All cause of suffering in are myself. You know, and see master says. So he does look sad like this. Now the 31 is like a, if somebody harm us, he must say, even somebody come to you and cut our head, it means that to kill us. Okay, even the cut kill us, what to do now again? What kind of behavior you should do? What kind of response you have to do? How, to, how you should respond in that case, yeah? Again, in that case, also like an you know, out of compassion, or to not anger, hate toward that person. Forgive that person. Not only forgive, but whatever bad karma he has, including harming me. Harming me also create a bad karma for him. Yeah. So now I take all bad karma and the harming karma that he's harming, that this bad karma that she's harming me, this bad karma that she's creating by harming me, I take it upon me out of compassion. And I forgive these persons. It is kind of attitude you should apply. Okay, this is one of the bad supposed to have. But is it means that somebody come to harm us and oh we I'm a practice of Buddha, so please harm me. I don't I will not do anything. No. This not mean, okay? That's a little bit clear. Wisdom and the compassion is important together. Okay. Order to walk with the two, two foot, yeah. Order to bird to fly, it means two wings. Order to survive in the walk on the path of Dhamma, you need a two, two methods of wisdom and compassion. Without this two, you cannot survive. You cannot fulfill the journey of Dhamma. Compassion and wisdom. Because of compassion, I understand the person who is harming me, his conditioning, that he is suffering, is controlled by negative emotions. And because of that reason, I forgive him. Right? Now, because of my word of wisdom, I protect myself and make sure anger or hatred won't arise in me. And make sure no anger, no hatred control me. And at the same time, I protect myself. Okay? This is the wisdom speaks. So, somebody harmed me, now what to do? Fight back. Or run away. Right? Or call the police. Right? We are not the region the state where, where we can manifest our animal body. <laughs> or you harm this body, I can manifest another body. No worry. Yeah. We are not in that state. We are just beginners. Right? And this body also we need. So somebody still somebody harm, start to harm us, then what to do? Oh, run away. Do not argue with these persons, do not fight these persons. Right? One of the uh, what is the Kardamba Mas also advised, like a van crazy person, yeah, who have a mental illness. He come to you and start to harm you. Then you understand this have an illness problem. Then what do you do? You run away with him. Not because you have you have you 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 have a, you are a coward. Not because of that, yeah. Because you understand he has a mind, mental illness. So who will fight with mental illness people? Just run away. Or just, okay, no. Because you understand he has a illness problem. Same thing. When outside people start to harm us, or understand, oh, he is a control by the emotions. He has lots of anger and hatred. That's why he is harming me. With this understanding, bring compassion, bring forgiveness to him. And sometimes, look at yourself also, think, it's my result of my bad karma that in past life, somehow, somewhere, I have, maybe I have harm to others. That's why I'm, fe I'm facing this problem. But this way, remain calm. Yeah. And then protect yourself. But one thing is very important is to not let anger or hatred control you. That's the important message. Yeah.
because having a compassion having a you know having compassion or loving is easy when you when you have no problem and you don't feel any problems any you know, problem from outside living a room alone and practice of compassion anyone can do it <laughs> right. what amount of compassion you have how amount of compassion you have or what kind of quality of compassion you have when you will understand when you feel when you face difficulties from outside when people come to you, speak harsh word to you, start to harm you. In that moment, what kind of mind comes up? Is it anger or hatred comes up, or is it compassion comes up? In that moment, compassion comes up, comes up then perfect. But in that moment, anger or hatred comes up, then you still need to do things. Still, you have to teach. You need to do more practice. Right? So, so who allow us? to check whether I have real compassion or not. It's people, understand? Who are sort of harmless. But they are the one, because with them, I can have a patience. Otherwise, we, we don't need any people, anyone to have a patience. They are the enemies who harm us, allow us and give us opportunity to have a patience. Allow us to check how much compassion I have, right? So they are so great to us, it means. Okay, but it's also like a, because we have an attachment to our happiness. Okay, because we have attachment to our happiness. Now, whenever we face suffering from outside, now we suffer with the same because of attachment. Because of attachment to our happiness, that I should be happy, I should be happy. Yeah, of course, we want to be happiness. But at the same time, every ends must say, once you have attainment to your happiness, and whenever you find, whenever you face some kind of difficulty from people, that people start to come to give you some hard times. Now, you don't feel good. Now you will be suffer. Why? You will be suffer not because of that person who is giving you hard times or harming you. You're going to suffer because you have an attachment to your happiness. If you know attainment to happiness, think about it. No one can make you suffer. It's impossible. Same word, yeah? Saying of uh, Zen Buddhism. Like, uh, if you have no wish to win, no one can defeat you. Think about it. Like, if you have no attainment, whatever happens, I don't mind. No matter what comes in my way, I remain calm. Happiness comes, okay. Suffering comes, okay. I don't complain because something comes. I will not become a, like some kind of drunk person because of happiness. Or no matter what comes in the way, I remain calm. So something comes or happiness comes, remain calm. If you have this kind of attitude, then nothing can bother you. Impossible. Things bother us. Why? Because we have attachment to our happiness. It has lots of psycho psychology reasons behind it. It means we are the cause that bringing suffering when people bother us. When people start to harm us, we feel bad. We feel stress. We don't feel sleep. Oh, this person harmed me today. He pushed me. He speak this way. He did this to me. We feel so much anger. So much feel not good. Yeah. Why? It's not that person who harmed me. It's my attachment to our happiness that bring these problems now in me. Yeah. So when you understand this, then easily can forgive. Yeah. I told you. Oh, yeah, the story of Punya Kashyap. Okay, story of Punya I think I told you. Oh, yeah, let me remind you again. So, so it's a story, it's a look, it's a teaching that when you have a great compassion in you, and it's, it's impossible to see any kind of harms or any kind of anyone as enemy. Enemy or harm only exists. I have anger, I have hatred. If you have no hatred, no anger in you, it's impossible to see any enemies. Enemy only exists, I have hatred. Enemy cannot exist, I have compassions. Yeah, like this. We have the story of Lord Buddha during the Lord Buddha's time. He is one of the disciples called Punya Kasha. Right. Punya Kasha was one of the Anvaranta masters. So after studying and learning from Buddhas, when he reached the high state, so one day Lord Buddha called him and asked him, now you can leave. 
You don't have to stay with me. Now, go to place to place and tease the Dhamma that I taught you. Give benefit to others as well. What have you learned now? Share with people what have you learned, what you experience now. So, this Punya Kashu asked, Oh Lord, where should I go there? Tell me the directions. So Lord Buddha said, Oh, you can go anywhere you choose. You don't have to ask me now. You are already qualified as a master. So now this Punya Kashu said, Oh Lord, I will go to the India, somewhere in Bihar, the village, somewhere in Bihar, okay, in the state of India. I will go to that towns. I see these people are so much ignorant. They have no wisdom. They don't know what to do with their life. They are so much living like animals. All they care about only this life. They don't know how to uh, do, what to do with life, what the meaning of life. They don't know. So I will go there. So when he says so, the Lord Buddha says, oh, you want to go that place? That place is a danger for the monks. These people, the town of people doesn't like monks. So he said, oh, I will really go, want to go. Even they don't like me. But someone had to go there to change these persons, change these people. Right? So when he said, then Lord Buddha said, oh, if you, before you go then, I want to ask you something. If you go to this town and these people start to speak harsh words to you, what kind of behavior you have? What kind of attitude you will have? How are you going to respond? What are you going to think? Lord Buddha asked. So the Punyakashi said, Oh Lord, I will be so happy when I go in, when if I enter in his town and these people start to harsh, speak harsh words to me, insulting me, saying bad things about me, then I will be so happy. I will think about what a kind of people they are. They can throw the stone, but they only speak harsh words to me. They speak only harsh words. They could throw stone, they don't throw stone, they only speak harsh words. That's okay. I will be so happy. Okay, he said so. Again, Lord would ask, what if these people try to st throw stone on you? Yeah, what kind of mind attitude you will have? Again, he said, oh, Lord, I will be again happy. What a kind of people they are. They could kill me, but they don't kill. They only throw stones. What a kind of people they are. I will respond in this way, he said. Again, Lord would say, again, I will ask, what if these people come and start to kill you? What kind of response you will have? And he said, oh, Lord, I will be again happy. What a kind of people they are. The body that I possess is a source of sufferings. I have, because of this body, I need to do many things, yeah. And you take care of this body. Because of that, I feel I have to face many problems, many sufferings because of this body. Now, these people are so kind to come to me and to make me free from this body. What a kind of people they are, he said. Understand? Yeah. What a kind these people are. I would think this way. And Lord Buddha said, oh, my son, now you can go. Now no one can harm you. No one can throw stone at you. No one can kill you. You are truly arhat. You are truly rich in that state where no death can reach. Okay, real arhat, he said. Now think about it very carefully. Yeah? If we have a Really compassion in ourselves. Is it possible to see any enemies? Is it possible to see some kind of, oh, this person harming me, this kind of attitude will arise, this kind of thoughts arise? Impossible. Society, yeah. no, enemy only exists, I for anger or I for hatred. The person with full compassion, is it impossible to see any enemies? For him, okay? It's not other people, yeah? It's about for, for him, who is full of love and compassion, for him, all enemy disappears. All harming of others disappears for him. Everything he see as a good. Yeah, that was. <clears throat> now the 14th one. Even if others should declare before the world the manner of unpleasant things about me, to speak only of the qualities in return with a mind that's filled with love, is the practice of good stories. Yeah, then again, this forgiveness. If some people speak bad thing about us behind, yeah, there's many, this, we have some happy in society, yeah. Uh, this person is not good. They don't speak in front because in front of speaking is a really scary, a little risky kind of a fight. 
So people speak bad things behind and this person not there, yeah. So the now must give example like if someone, if others saying bad thing about you, declare your bad qualities or saying unpleasant things about you, you're behind, yeah. And you heard all oh, this person saying bad thing about me to these people, other other people, and you heard about this. What kind of mind actually you need? How you should respond to it? Like normally, he said bad thing about us, and we also speak bad thing about. Oh, he said like this to me. He himself was like this. He himself was a thief. He himself have a, a scandal. He himself was a, what kind of this and that. Yeah, we start to speak. The master, oh, do not, do not do like this means. Do not let others' behavior change our behavior. You know, do not let others' behavior change our behavior because we are representing ourselves, not the persons. What kind of person we are in that situation, we are representing that times. So, in that moment, oh, remain calm. Remain calm, and then what happened? Oh, he said bad about us, we say good thing about him. See, return. If he have a good qualities, if he have a good qualities, if he have a good person, if he have something good in him, then please, yeah, say bad thing about him. If you say a good quality about him to return to the other peoples, but do not speak bad thing about him as he did to you, us. If we behave same as him, then we are no difference. He said bad thing about us, and we also started bad thing about him. Then there's no difference. It's the only difference is who started first. Yeah, that's the only difference. Okay, okay. that's an Indian saying says like that when elephants walk, dog barks. Okay, when elephant walks, dog barks, but no elephant run away and go back to fight with dogs. So, at the end, said, be like elephants. Remain calm. Yeah. People saying bad about you, let them talk. All you focus on yourself, how to progress myself. Let them talk. Time will come that they will understand who am I. Let my own actions, my own progress be their answer. Understand? Yeah. So that's what it means. Elephant walks, dog barks. Okay, it's Indian saints. Yeah. Same thing, yeah. So when people saying bad thing about us in or behind, or oh, should not be angry or hated to other persons, remain calm. And then if you have to speak about him, speak nice to him. Speak good about him. Yeah. If he have uh, something good in him, yeah. If he have nothing good in exist in him, then remain calm. Keep sip your lip, yeah. Remain calm. But do not make it up, make it up some uh, things that he never practiced. And, oh, he's a good practitioner. Oh, he's a generous person. He's a compassionate person. Do not say like this if he has nervous qualities. If he has, then of course, speak more. Yeah. If he doesn't have, then remain calm. Keep quiet. It's a bad thing about me. I remain quiet. Right? It's a way of compassion again. Okay. Yeah. Again, the way of wisdom. As I said before, yeah, we are not living in mountains. We have to live in society. And sometimes some people saying bad thing about us and we remain calm. Sometimes it can cost losing our job, losing our relationship with our family members and friends and girlfriend, boyfriends. Let's say you have your boyfriend or girlfriend. Somebody said, oh, somebody said to your girlfriend that your boyfriend has other girls or other men. You know, and that and your girlfriend start to ask and you remain calm. <laughs> Big problem, yeah. In that moment, or explain, respond. I don't know why this person is saying bad thing about me. I don't have any, I didn't have done anything in that way. Protect yourself with skill way, skillful. And then in that time, of course, we need to protect. We need to survive in the society. Right? That's our rights. We are not people in the living Himalaya alone. Right? In the, if you live alone, you have nobody, then no need to worry. Yeah, but we live in a society. We need to work. We have our family, we have our friends. And then when we heard, when we our family member heard about things about us which are not true, then we didn't explain them. I don't know why this person speak about me, but I have never done these things. Maybe he has some problems. 
Maybe he's in suffering. Maybe he's a not mental uh, finding some problem in him. I don't know why he's been, but I have never done. Plan about it, right? Using the wisdom. But sometimes, no matter what happens, oh, I will not let anger or hatred rule my mind. That's the real teaching of the master simply. Okay? Having a compassion doesn't mean that, oh, I'm a compassionate person, I'm a good star, so please kill me, harm me, whatever you do, I will accept, don't worry. No, not this way. Okay? Just because of compassion person doesn't mean you offer the good star some kind of good food or some kind of shit. Okay, and then not both say, oh, I'm both star, so I can eat whatever you offer me. No, 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 he will choose. He will choose what benefit his body. It's not like you give him some filthy food and he will eat because he's a bodhisattva, the compassion. Yeah. He will use his wisdom that what kind of food benefit his body. Yeah, because it doesn't mean compassion person, doesn't mean eat what kind of food you can offer him. So many people have uh, this kind of uh, wrong means concept that because he's a compassion person, so I can treat him any ways he will accept. No, no. If the story ends in master story, sir. Very dangerous masters. Very like look like angry muscle. They're gonna give you slap if you do something like this. Okay? They can do like this. We have story of dancing masters. Read the story of Master Mira, Marpa. He is quite a danger master, yeah. And so many ancient Zen master, really compassion person, but same time. They're not let harm their freedoms. Understand? Using their wisdoms. They put that. They protect their right. Okay, everything. Right? Like this. So even if others, so here also, like if declare before the world, yeah, all manners of unpleasant things about me. So declare before the world. It's the whole world. Whole world. In that case, also remain calm. So what to say then few people? Oh, he said, oh, just for speaking of few people, then of course we need to be calm. Even he said bad thing about the whole world. It's like a, it's like a, you became like a breaking news in the BBC or CNN. He's speaking bad about you in through BBC and CNN. Even he, even he does so or she does so. Yeah, I mean, you're not saying bad. Even if that happens, so if you speak bad, uh, bad thing about us only for a few people, in front of few people, then of course uh, don't bother me. I mean, come. And you see it gonna risk your job, risk or risk your uh, relationship or risk other things. Explain. Okay, that's what you use your wisdom to protect. Okay, that's the very, very important as a dharma practitioner. Dharma practitioner is the most dangerous person, the one Jan Master says. They are the most dangerous person. No dharma person can control by people. You cannot control. Than a person, a real than a person. Okay, I'm talking a real than a person. He's the one who cares with freedom, a real freedom. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> we have a story of Master Bilarapa yeah? about uh, one of the Sakya master called Chogil Papa. Okay, in the Tibet. So Chogil Papa was a profound master in the lineage of Sakyas. So in, in Tibetan Buddhism, we have a Sakya lineage, we have a Kagyu lineage, we have a Gilug lineage, we have a Nyingma lineage. Yeah, four Tibetan Buddhisms, four different lineage. I myself am a Kagyu, Kagyu lineage, yeah. So one of the masters from Sakya lineage went to China because that time he was so popular performing master. Okay, called Chogyal Papa. He was invited in China. And Chinese emperor asked him while they are having tea, asking, oh, master, tell me, Who's the wealthiest person in Tibet right now? And tell me who's the brave, brave person in Tibet right now. And this master Chogil Papa says, Oh, there's a monk called Karakom Jung. Like he He's the wealthiest person right now in Tibet. And there's a person called Milarepa. He's the bravest person in Tibet right now. He said, Milarepa and Karakom Jung. So now this Chinese emperor said, Oh, what kind of wealth this Karak uh, this uh, Karakum Jung has that make him wealthiest person in Tibet? Okay, Chinese emperor asked. Oh, he has this 
great compassion in him. Unchangeable compassion, unconditioned compassion. Okay? Because of that reason, yeah, because of the inner great quality of compassion, he is the richest person right now in Tibet. Okay, sometimes we use like a like a like a Arya's seven wealth. Okay, use Arya's seven wealth, but this Arya's seven wealth also the result of the great compassions. So Karagumtu had this seven wealth, which are out of compassions. Okay, or oh, he had this wealth. That's why he's a wealthy person. His inner quality cannot be changed. No one can change him. No one can shake his inner quality. That's why he's a wealthy person. He has this wealth inside. And then, what makes Milarepa's brave person? Why he's so brave? Why he's a powerful person? And then, um, Chari Baba says, oh, he's a so brave person because he killed his all enemies. Okay, what kind of enemy he killed? Okay. Yeah, he killed all negative emotions that he has. Right? He killed this life enemies who harm his family and him. And if you read the story of Milarepa, yeah. Okay, he has just some uncle and you know, and this story. He he already got, uh, take revenge, yeah. He took revenge. He took uh, what he got, taught them lessons, yeah. And then also he practiced so much. That he make himself free from all anger and negative emotions. Then he killed all his inner enemies also. That's why he's the bravest person. See? Now, what the wealth is now? We think our bank balance is our wealth. That's one kind of one kind of illusion that we have. But real wealth is not a bank balance. Real wealth that brings real peace inside. You have a millions of dollars in your bank balance and you are empty from inside, then what to, what to do with this bank balance now? No, what do you call it? No, no, what do you call it? nothing good in the body. Yeah. But you have great compassion, great peace of mind. And if, even you are making a big amount of money, you don't have to worry about that much. But what important is what makes us in real happy? What brings us real peace? That's what matters in our life. Yeah, like this. Okay. <clears throat> now the 15th one. Even if others should expose my hidden fault or deride me with speaking amidst great gatherings of many people, to conceive of them as a spiritual friend and bow before them to respect is a practice of good stories. See, but now this is on the in front. Before it was a back, yeah, something bad about me. Now he's uh, speaking in front of me. In a crowd of people, let's say you go to some party, Christmas party or New Year Eve, yeah? We have many, many friends and families there gathering, okay? Suddenly somebody come, uh, toast. <laughs> and it's, uh, listen, listen, everyone. This person, look, this person. He had this bad quality. He this, this, he did this, he did this. Yeah, start speaking. In front of the people, thousand people. Now what to do in this moment? Most cases, we're going to lose our Temper, yeah. This was, this type of practice also became harder for us. Not because the practice itself is harder. This type of practice became so harder for us because we are the people who are looking for respect from others. Others became so important to us. How others will think of me? What others think about me is so important. So we live our life according to others. We live how to look good instead of how to become good. We have so much to worry about how to look happy in the people. We don't worry about how to become happy. Most of the case our life depends on most of the case our life is we live our life according to the opinion of the people. Other people so important. When others become so important, then what happens? Then you don't want to lose any respect that you are getting from others. You want to say that. And when people speak about bad things about us in front of people, oh, we became so scared that I'm going to lose this respect that I'm receiving from these people, from others. Then we become mad. Then we become angry. I'll come hated, arised. Why is arised? 
other are taking so importance. Our life, we live our life according to peoples. That's why. So many ancient masters, if you read the story of the ancient masters, how they live, they don't care about what people think of them. All they care about how to improve my inner life, how to become good, how to have this great compassion in me, how to bring this wisdom in me, how to transform myself, or to transform myself, no matter what kind of risk I have to face, I will take it. Okay, that's why we have so many masters like a, act like a, live like a crazy. They don't care what people think about them. All they care about what I need to improve myself to become better persons, to become good. They are so into the Dhamma practice. We have the one of the story of Milarepaya. When there's Indian master called Padamba, Padamba means if English translate, if I translate into English like a great father. He visited from India to Tibet and went to China also. Very profound master, okay, Padamba. He is the founder of Chit. I don't know if you know that one text of Chit. Okay, he's a founder of Chit. Chit. He's the, like a father of Chit. Yeah. When Father Damba came to Tibet, and so many Indian, so many Tibetan master went to visit him because he's a profound, really good stone master. Yeah. And then, of course, Master Milarpa also went to see him. Okay. We have a long story about this. Conversations. Yeah. Long story. We have. A, let me brief. Few points, yeah. So after having long conversation, asking a question, answer about each other's, yeah. And at the end, at the end, Padam Pakadam Padamba was so impressed with Master Milarepa. His answers, his behaving, his doing, yeah, very impressed by his answers. Okay, but at the end, he said because Master Milarepa was uh, almost like a naked. He had this white small kind of shawl. Small white shawl, even if not enough for his body. So he's uh, like a, uh, living like a, some kind of you know, naked, showing his private part. Yeah. So Master Padamba says, Oh Milarepa, you, what kind of what kind of dress is this? You are Dhamma practitioner, you are Buddhist practitioner. You are you should not live this way. These are body parts, you should not show it everyone. You should hide it. You cannot show it everyone. You should hide it, he said. Why you behave like a crazy person? Okay, he said to the Milarepa. Don't behave like a crazy. Why you behave like crazy? Then Milarepa says in his song, okay, very nice song. He said, Oh, Padamba, what to do? What to do? The craziness is in my blood, he said. First, my great father became a crazy. Was a Telopa, okay? Uh, father of great fa grandfather, yeah, Telopa. And because of him, his son, Narupa, became a crazy. And then Marpa became a crazy, my master Marpa. And because of my master Marpa, I became a crazy. And now, because of me, my whole student became a crazy. His whole lineage is a crazy lineage of crazy, he said. <laughs> whole lineage of crazy, what to do? And then Master Milarpa said, Master Padam, what kind of craziness you are talking about? Oh, craziness about compassion, craziness about love, craziness about Dhamma practice. Into all I think is a compassion, practice Dhamma, improve myself. Too much thinking, I forgot what to wear or what to not to wear, what to hide or what to not to hide. I forgot, he said. You know, it's a sign. If you read the, some of the story of Ensign, not Ensign, but some scientists, yeah. Ensign times some scientists have a long hair, long braid. Okay, they say, why this happens? Because they are so much into interior work. They forgot to shave. Yeah, same thing, the master Milan the story, same thing, I forgot. So, so all I think is how to improve myself. But then I forgot to what to, uh, what to hide or what to not to hide. Understand? Yeah, that's what happens. Okay. <clears throat> so this master, yeah. So this master, I don't care what people think about things. They live according to the dharma. They live according to the truth. They live according how to improve myself. That's what matters. What people think of me, I don't care. That's 
our opposite of ourselves. Yeah, most of us will live according to others, and that's make our life funny. A funny, yeah. Wow, like a hypocrisy become hypocrites. Okay, that the block us to improving ourselves. We become something that we are not. Okay. There's a word called accidental man. Okay, accidental man. In Western world, yeah, they are accidental man. So many thinkers from West, they say most of life of people have is accidental life. They just become, they never thought they will they will they wanna do this. Accidental man. So many people study of engineer at the end, they became something else. <laughs> They became like a, some kind of you know yoga teachers. Some study their whole life they study this, but now they are what they're doing. They are uh, as a cook. They work whole life they study and they have a master of degree. At the end they are working as a cook. So here, like a you no know, whole life you are doing something and now your result is something else. Okay, this this call an accidental. You are there, whatever you're doing it is not. Your real voice is because of society, because of you know, others. Now you became something else that wasn't you, wasn't your plan. And you don't know how I come here, how I become a mess. Right? So important. So as I said before, whole dharma practice, process of dharma is all about how to become, not how to look. How to become good, not about how to look good. And this attitude that we have, this behavior that we have, so much worry about how to look good, is so killing us. Even we have to go to some parties, yeah, and we need to wear this dress. And this dress, we know, is so uncomfortable. Okay, tight and not uncomfortable. But because it looks look good, and it's a fashion nowadays, and then we will wear that, even it feeling it not giving us feeling good. But it looks, it give us good looking as a fashion now. So we wear that. So we are so much worried about how to look good instead of how to become good. And of course, becoming good is always not easy. It's difficult. You have to change many things. You have to face all type of risk, all type of what you call challenge. You have to come out from your comfort zone to become. But looking good, you don't have to worry about anything. All you need is to wear some nice dress, bring some smile on your face. That's fine. That's enough. Right? Looking good. It's always easy. And we are always choose easy things. We don't want to give up our comfort zone. Yeah? And that sticking with comfort zone not let us to improve ourselves. Okay, so many Anzima says, people die not when they stop their breathing. Of course, we say people die because when we stop breathing, yeah, we say he died, yeah. So every Enzima says, people die not when he, when he stopped breathing. People died when he stopped improving. Once he stop improve from inside, he's dead. He's dead. He's not alive anymore. Okay, right. So here also, if somebody come and in gathering of people expose our fault, then what to do? Oh, in that case also, oh, respect that person as a like a you know, spiritual friend. He's saying bad thing about me in both peoples. Oh, I pay him respect. But make sure I will not bring any kind of anger or hatred toward him. Yeah, with compassion. And then again, same time, you need to use other wisdom, as I said before. Yeah, use wisdom. Let's say you are having a, your birthday party or Christmas party, and suddenly some this guy comes and spoke bad thing about you, which is not true. Okay, now what to do then? You cannot stay calm yeah, in that moment. You should not. Because you're going to lose your things, many things. Relationship going to be bad. So many things you're going to lose. So in that case, use wisdom. Explain. Talk. Right? Bring the reasons. Oh, I don't know why he's saying these things to me right now. Oh, but it's not true. Right? Explain about yourself. Because we need to live in society. We don't want to lose our job and relationship. Yeah, these things are so 
that are use of wisdom to protect, but make sure no anger or hatred arise in you. That's the most important thing. And whenever suddenly this anger or hatred arise, or oh, remain calm. Away, oh, I have anger, hate, or right. Oh, I should not. Do not let it continuously control you. It controlled you for, for one minute, two minutes, but understand, oh, this negative emotion arising me, control me. So now let it go. Do not let it control you for long time. The moment it control you, aware of it and make yourself free from anger. By applying or thinking, this person who's doing this to me, he is ignorance. Is a control by negative emotions. And look at yourself also, think about yourself also, it's my result, my bad karma. Yeah. With this thinking, we make our mind calm, make ourselves free from anger or hatred that arises in the moment. Okay, this is the best good stories. Okay, now we will do like a five minute break, yeah, few minute break, and then we come to do some meditation together. Okay, again, the sit in the meditation positions and make yourself relax. Make your body like a calm. Do not touch your body. And then start by counting the breathing 21 times. Breathing in and out. The way we take a normal breathing. Yeah, let's take normal breathing in and out. Count 21 times. After counting 21 times, just keep focusing on the breathing, how it goes in and how it goes out. No other thought should be there, no other thinking. Only you and your awareness to the breathing should be there. Everything, everyone else should disappear.
in a way of your beating. No other thoughts. Only you and your awareness, your breathing, should remain. Now try to reflect the way I want happiness, the way I don't want a serpent. Every centipede looking for happiness. No one wants serpents. We are equal. We are the same. The way I am carrying the Buddha nature, every sentient carrying the Buddha nature, which is pure, perfect, and beautiful. So we all equal, we all same. From now on, I do my best to not to bring any anger or hatred to anyone. I 
I do my best to remain calm and offer my forgiveness and compassion. I understand people, those who harm me, insult me, speak bad things about me, in sufferings, controlled by negative emotions. Because of these causes, they are harming me. I understand. Truly happy person cannot harm others. He is harming me, giving me suffering. It means he is in suffering. She is in suffering. Understand he is controlled by negative emotion. If he had great compassion in him or her, it's not possible to harm me. He's harming me because of negative emotions. I understand. So I offer my forgiveness. I offer my compassion. I also understand whatever happens in life, the reasons. Nothing happens without reasons. Now I'm facing this suffering, these problems, this criticizing from people, insulting from people, harming from people that I'm facing. It must be a result of my bad karma that I have done before. Without karma, cause and effect, nothing can happen. So now people are harming me, giving me a hard time. I understand it's my result of my bad karma. Therefore, I will not complain. I remain calm. Now breath in, all sun beings, especially those people who harm me, be free from suffering and its causes, such as desire, anger, and ignorance. Breath out, may all sun beings, especially those people who harm me, find a peace, happiness, and joy, and its causes, such as a great love, great compassion, and wisdom. This repeating, keep repeating, but repeating.
and then come back to the breathing. <clears throat> breathe in, I know I'm breathing in. Breathe out, I know I'm breathing out. Just be aware of the breathing, how it goes in and how it goes out. Can reflect back in me <clears throat> myself as the name with happiness, peace, and it causes such a love, compassion, and wisdom. Breath out, may I be free from self, and it causes such a desire, anger, and hatred. And keep repeating with compassion and loving to yourself. You come back to the picking. Now do another thing with it all. Do our dedications. What I would choose will be again by listening to them. May it become. May it become a cause of happiness for all sanity. Because my virtues may be sanity and be free from suffering and causes. Okay, so thank you very much for joining class after long vacations. Yeah, so it was yeah. this night too, and then we'll meet again on another day. Yeah, so next week is it next week? Uh, no, actually, no, 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 uh, Thursday. Yes, it's Thursday. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday or Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday for Wednesday U.S. time. Same same time. Seven p.m. Eastern Wednesday. This Wednesday. Yep. How many more classes do we have, uh, Jason? Uh, Lama, Maybe uh, more, more five six classes. Okay. Yeah, I hope it will finish. 
Let's try. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. All and right. see you again. Please take care. Take care. Good evening. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.